science in pajamas. Jamma, 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 jamma. All right, you guys. So, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about why carbon atoms are able to make macromolecules. Now, macromolecules means large molecules. And that's kind of what carbon is known for. I mean, without carbon, we probably wouldn't be able to have living things, at least not on this planet. After all, life on this planet is considered carbon-based life forms. So we are based and made off of these long carbon-based macromolecules. And we're going to talk a little bit about what those are, but we're also going to talk about why carbon is so special that it can form these molecules. Now, it goes back to its electrons. So carbon has six electrons. It has, its atomic number is six, so it has six protons. And oftentimes, it will also have six electrons. It doesn't really lose them all that much. I mean, can it? Yeah, it can. So we have an electron here and here, and those two are on the inner energy level, so the first energy level. But then we also have a second energy level where we find four more of them. Now these are not the same things as the actual orbitals, but it's just a good way for us to kind of look at them and see how the energy level fits. So we have four electrons in the second energy level. Now it can hold up to eight. That energy level, that second energy level can hold up to eight. Now in a lot of metals such as sodium, sodium it only has And remember my, I'm not a chem teacher, I don't have this stuff memorized, you guys. All right, so sodium, okay, that is what I thought. Man, I drew that really bad, didn't I? I'm sorry, guys. Now, it's common for things like sodium, which is a metal, to have Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To have only a couple, like one, two, or three electrons in that outer level. Can they have four? Yeah. Would they have more? Maybe. But they usually have less than half of what that energy level can hold. So what happens with metals, it's very easy for them to lose this electron. Now that's going to give it a positive charge going to become an ion, and since there's no electrons in that energy level, it's essentially like the energy level isn't there anymore, and the next one down is completely full, so now it's stable. With some of the other non-metals, like chlorine, which has an atomic number of 17, It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Now it can hold eight in that outer energy level. So a lot of times what will happen is it will pick up a stray. Sorry, a stray electron giving it a negative charge. And that's why sodium ions and chlorine ions oftentimes will form ionic bonds with each other. This can lose one electron, this can gain one electron. However, carbon, on the other hand, doesn't usually gain or lose any. Can it? Yeah, it can. But a lot of times what it'll do is form covalent bonds, and because it can hold up to 
eight electrons in that outer shell, that means that it can form up to four bonds with other atoms. And we don't normally see something like that. A lot of times it's more common for different atoms to form one or two or maybe even three bonds, but the fact that this can form four allows it to have a lot more variation. And what I mean by that is it can form a whole bunch of different combinations. Like we can have carbon with H, 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 H. So that's CH3 or CH4. We can have carbon with hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. It can also form bonds with other carbons. So look, we're starting to make a bigger structure. And that's why carbon is so cool. Because of its ability to make four bonds, it can actually make these really big structures and it can form bonds with more carbons. Now, what I mean by that is it can actually form these long chains. Now, these outer electrons, we call them valence electrons. So it has four valence electrons. It can ha hold or work with up to eight. So that's why it can form four. It has four. It needs four more to be stable. Now, the cool thing about this is, like we said, it can form long chains. So we can have carbon next to H, 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 C, 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 H, H, And the only reason why I stopped there is because I ran out of room. Now, because it can form these long chain molecules, these macromolecules, it actually helps it to be able to build um, certain macromolecules that are we're able to use to build things like cells. So it's because of these long chains that it can build structures like cell walls or cell membranes or different things like that. Now, not only can it form four single bonds, it also has the ability to form multiple bonds and still have room left over. So we can have carbon double bonded to oxygen. So that's one, two, like that. It still has four bonds, one, two, three, four. Oxygen can only have two bonds, so it has two. Hydrogen only has one bond, so that has one, that has one. So we have this struct, we can form double bonds. Sometimes, ever so often, it's not common, but it can happen. So it can form something like a triple bond. So it says one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So each one only has four bonds still. You can even keep this going. C, C, C. Now, are those as common? No. Every so often, you can also have a quadruple bond. What I mean by that, it has all four bonds with another carbon. However, 
that is extremely unstable and it generally won't stay in that format for very long. So it's, it has this ability to make multiple bonds like double, triple, etc. Or it can still just stay in single bonds and have these long chains or it can do a combination of them like we saw with how I was able to do a chain with triple and single bonds. See. Now, when we make these long chains, a lot of times they'll be they'll have repeating sequences. So these macromolecules they're long chains, and a lot of times within that long chain, you will see re repeating sequences. So we call these smaller subunits monomers. Small subunit. So mono meaning one, mers refers to meros, which is essentially parts. So one part. And then when you have a whole bunch of these monomers together, you have something called a polymer. This is a large unit, large molecule. Now what I mean by this is macromolecules tend to be polymers. And polymers are made up of these small subunits that are bonded together called monomers. Think of it like Legos. This is your, let me get a different color. This is your Lego. It's a monomer. But then when you take a whole bunch of them and you stick them together, you get a larger structure. That's your polymer. So as you can see, this larger structure is made up of these smaller pieces. And that's essentially what we're talking about with these macromolecules. There are these really, really big structures but within them are these smaller pieces that are all bonded together. And that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, one of the most well-known cases or the ones that we tend to talk about the most would be proteins. Proteins are these really, really big, very important macromolecules, and they're made up of these smaller subunits called amino acids. So imagine if this entire thing is a protein, then these are all the amino acids that would come together to make this larger protein. And when we bond the monomers together, we call that polymerization. Why do we call it polymerization? Can't spell. Uh, geez, I really cannot spell. Miss Comar is not having a good day for spelling, is she? No, she's not. She's got to double check her notes. Okay, I was on the right track. Polymerization. So what that means is we are forming the polymer by attaching these small subunits together. All right, so I kind of, I hope that kind of helps summarize carbon molecules and why they're so cool. Um, in the meantime, you guys, stay awesome, stay amazing, stay safe, and stay healthy. All right, you guys, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.